Now, let's take a look at one of the preliminary fights of the evening. Our preliminary bout this evening matches Jerry Bell against Phil Benedict. Jerry Bell's expertise happens to be in the Western boxing style, whereas the five foot six inch Phil Benedict prefers freestyle wrestling. Jerry Bell is someone who has won some tough man competitions in South Carolina. Somebody whose goal is to be the heavyweight champion of the world. Certainly high aspirations. Jerry Bell from Irmo, South Carolina is not somebody to be trifled with. 9-0 and oh is his record as a boxer, and at 6 feet 2, 210 pounds, he is certainly somebody who is physically imposing. See his record there. They added another 6 from what I had. 15-0 and oh now his record. His box, boxing is his discipline, as we mentioned. And, of course, he's somebody that favors the right hook. Now let's take a look at his opponent, Phil Benedict. Phil Benedict is a freestyle wrestling expert from Moreno Valley, California. His five foot six inch, 200 pound frame was built by Jack and Steel. A fearsome power lifter, Phil held no less than four individual NCAA national championship records during his competitive career. Tonight, using his opponent in the ring, he may show us a deadlift of an entirely different kind. My strongest attribute as a fighter, I believe, are my ground fighting techniques. Because of my wrestling background and also with uh, my weightlifting experience, I think my strength gives me an edge where most opponents. Well, Phil Benedict is somebody who certainly is physically imposing despite his diminutive height. He is only five foot six, as I mentioned, but they talk about his weightlifting prowess. There you can see freestyle okay. wrestling, his expertise, his weightlifting prowess. This is a man who bench pressed over 450 pounds. And Bob Wall, I have to ask you, is that something that's a hindrance or a help in this particular competition? Oh, it's a definitely a help in this competition. And again, we've got the wrestler versus the boxer. And it's going to, you know, Jerry Bell's job is he's going to have to move and he's going to have to hurt uh, Jerry, uh, uh, Phil Benedict before, before they go to the mat. Once they go to the mat, it becomes uh, Phil Benedict's world. Well, one of the things that occurs here in the tail of the tape as you take a look at it, an eight-inch height advantage by Jerry Bell. But obviously, Phil Benedict will want to negate that by getting him to the mat. And once he gets to the mat, my guess is, Bob and Tom, that that is certainly going to be an advantage for Phil Benedict. Take a look at the styles of Jerry Bell and how he's going to try and keep Benedict upright. You got 10 minutes on the floor. Everything goes. Caution with the eyes. No biting. Are you ready, sir? Are you ready, sir? Back to the corner. Back to the corner. Stepping in with us now, former lightweight world champion boxer Ray Mancini. And Ray, once again, like the first Let's match, we have a battle of boxer versus wrestler. Well, unless the boxer gets off first, tries to penetrate the wrestler, he's going to have a takedown as such, and being there, that's going to be their sport. Well, I tell you what, we were talking about the strength of Benedict earlier. He was on his back behind, and he completely threw Bell over. Now Bell's starting to recover a little bit, Tom. Well, it's the same thing, Todd. You know, once these guys, these grapplers, get these strikers in close, it's, it's the end of the ball game because if they can get in under his reach, Bell obviously has a much longer reach than, than Benedict does, but, but he's got him in tight. And he's... But... And he tapped out. He tapped out. Wow. He tapped out. You wow. see, Bell, Bell made the basic mistake that you never make. You never turn your back ever on a grappler. Well, clearly what ends up happening is once you turn your back, tapped that's out. when you're going to get choked. He hit his nose on the chain here. Now we're trying to get some explanation from C hey, Cecil out. Peoples that's as to who tapped out. No, no, Jerry Bell tapped out. Phil Benedict got his injury on the, on the side of the uh, arena. Good job. Good job. Jeez, I don't know who looks worse. Well, Tom, get a chance to take a closer look at this particular replay as to what ended up happening. 
And I'm still confused, Todd. I mean, obviously, Benedict was trying to get him in close. Well, Benedict shot in, took him down, and now he's going to turn him over. As soon as he turns him over, he tries to come into the mount position. He's in a cross guard. He comes across into a mount position. And as soon as he gets his leg over the leg, he's got total control. Todd, I, I, they say that... Right there, there's the tap out right, right there. Right, there it is, there it is. There's, the, there's the tap out right there. Jerry Bell did indeed tap out in a very short match, actually less than a minute. And you can see right there the excitement. Everybody got confused by the fact that he was so bloody, thinking that it was Benedict right. as the one. And he throws himself and actually looks angry there. Right. But what he is, he's excited. Exactly. He's saying, hey, I won this thing, even though I look like I didn't. <laughs> Benedict looked like he lost, and, and that's the way we reacted. Wow. Well, let's go up to the ring announcer, John Higginson, for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the second preliminary fight by tap out in 36 seconds, Phil 